let's go to Chris down the road in Memphis, Tennessee. What's up, Chris? Hey, what's up? Just rocking on, dude. What are you doing? I am just <laughs> calling in. Good to um, man. What's up? So I'm having a problem with communication with my wife and not in the way of being able to express our needs with each other and be, being able to fulfill them, but in the way of just having a friendly conversation, be able to, to hold the conversation and just having something to talk about. Like if I had a friend come into my car and we're driving 30 minutes down the road, like we'll talk all the way until we get to destination B. But I feel like a lot of times with my wife, I don't know if there's just nothing to talk about or I have just so much stuff running through my brain that work or it, it's just, it's starting to cause a problem with connection. Why? Why have you put that expectation that you have to talk everywhere you go? No, it's not. I'm not saying it all the time we need to talk, but it has become a problem to where there's just not enough talking. Like we're just sitting too much or I'm not communicating with her enough, just being a friend to her. Hmm. Why are you choosing that? I don't know. I don't know if it's it if it's just my mind is consumed with work or yeah, but um, like I, I feel like there's nothing to talk about or I, I don't know. No, it's not one of those two things because both of those are choices. So I'm, I'm right. looking for the question beneath that question because everybody I know works really hard and they could if they wanted to let their minds be consumed with work all the time. And there's a few days out of a month that my brain is super consumed with work. Um, and that's just part of being a human and being alive. But there are days when I can choose, I'm just gonna keep thinking about work, keep thinking about work, or I'm gonna choose to think about and talk about my wife, talk to her about our home, about our family life and stuff like that. Um, my wife and I, here, here's what I'm struggling. My wife and I, dude, have, like, she likes singer-songwriters, man, and I do too, but I really like old punk rock. And I like to go to metal shows and she would prefer to go to a theater and she writes like historical fiction, man. And I, you know, I, I can't think of two people who I know who have more different things that they care about and love in the world than me and my wife. And there's never something, there's, we always have things to talk about. And I'm not afraid of two hours of silence when we're driving on a trip somewhere. That's some great time too, just to just sit in my head. So I don't put, I don't put this weight on the other side of the scale. And that's what, what I'm getting at is, Either A, there are things you want to talk about that you're afraid to bring up with her or that you can't bring up with her because it's not safe to. There's something you want to tell her and you don't want to do it. Or B, you're just kind of a jerk and you're just st staying in your own head. You're kind of, you're, you're starving your wife of your relationship. Am I missing something? Mm -hmm. No, I, I would say um, a lot of times I might not bring up stuff because... Like if it has to do with work or whatever, I mean, we own a couple of companies and sometimes I don't want to bring up certain situations with her because she might want to do something a different way. Um, and I, I disagree with it and it's, it's just kind of getting past the argument or, um, sometimes it's just best to not tell her about it. Um, so let me let me let me let me give you a line. I want you to tattoo this on your heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Conflict delayed is conflict amplified. A hundred percent of the time. You have now started like lying to your wife by omission because it's just easier. Instead of having the harder conversation, which which is should we be in business together? Or is it wise for us to run businesses together and be married? Because it looks like we're on a collision course here. Well, it's, it's not that it's not that she runs it with me. It's just she doesn't run it at all. Um, it's just if I were to come and bring a situation to her and I tell her how I handled it, then she would give her input that a lot of times it's not a... Um, constructive criticism it's more of just a criticism sure that's fair um, so are you more um, than work a lot of times i'm not but i i try to be i mean i, I definitely try to be hmm so g give me like a, a solid question 
Um, Here's what it feels like. It feels like you are, um, and again, dude, lean in and tell me I'm wrong. Okay, tell me I'm wrong on this. It feels like you are in a pool and the water's like up to your waist and you are just splashing around and you're like, ah, I can't get out of the water. It's wet in here. And then we're all sitting on the side like, well, just get out of the pool. And you're like, ah, I can't. <laughs> like, I'll just get out of the pool, man. Like, I, I can't, I don't, I don't know where, I don't know what you're struggling with. There's something beneath this that you're, that you're not telling me. What is it? I guess I would say, um, what is it? I mean, how, what do is I, it? how do I, how do I bring my wife into my work life without, even though it's not her ambition or her wants or her needs to be a part of it really in the way that I want her to be. Um, there it is. There it is right there. Yeah. She doesn't care about your job. <laughs> she cares about her, you. Mm-hmm. She didn't give a crap about your business intricacies and who did what and the plumbing at this facility is busted and I can't believe it and the profits over. She didn't care about any of that. She cares about Chris. Right, and because this means so much to you, like you're like a favorite band when you were in high school, you've said, "Here's a rule I made, dude. If you didn't like Seinfeld, I knew we weren't going to be friends." I used to ask that question, like in the first time I, the first conversation I met people, "Hey, do you like Seinfeld?" And they'd be like, "Nah," and I we just know we're not going to be friends. I have one friend in my life who doesn't like Seinfeld to this day, and it's my wife of twenty years. <laughs> but you've created a world where if you don't like this, then we're probably not gonna. And that's like, why have you boxed yourself in that way? She doesn't care about your job. So what? Like, what do you want? I don't know. I just, I just, I just feel that I wish I thought going into marriage, I thought we would be able to, um, go forward together and build something together. And even if she's on the sideline of not running it, but at least be like, I guess more of a cheerleader or more of a, I don't know. I guess have interest. I, I... Okay. Can I, can I poke at what I think it is? Absolutely. How long have you been married? Coming up on three years. Okay. All right. Perfect. So first thing you mentioned is beautiful. And this is your starting point with your wife. You had a picture of what marriage was going to be. And that was going to be, you were going to be busting it real hard. Crush, like you were going to be working really hard in business. You're going to do good. And she was going to be super, she's going to be right there by your side cheering you on. And now you're three years in and you're realizing I'm busting it really hard and my wife could care less what my job is. And I try to bring her in and then it ends up, she gives me some bad advice. Like, why don't you just fire him? It's like, I can't just fire. And now we're in a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It took me 16 years, 15 years, trying to think when our last big mess was, me and my wife. Let me say 15 years for me to tell my wife I've been working for 15 years for you to say um, th- three or four, uh, four magic words. I'm proud of you. And as a Texas male, it was really hard for me to say those words out loud. I felt ashamed. I felt small. I felt embarrassed. I just wanted my wife to say, dude, I'm really proud of you. I see how hard you're working for the family. I see how hard you're working the lives of other people, et cetera, et cetera. And until I said those words out loud, she didn't get it because she thought our fights were when I was coaching, like I would just tell her all the track times. She's like, I don't care. And when I was working in higher ed, I was telling her about all the budget numbers and the suicides. And that she's like, I just don't, I mean, I don't care about that. I don't like it. I don't, I mean, it's not a thing. If I wanted to do, if I was interested in that, I would have done those jobs too. And I don't, I don't care about them. And I took that to mean she didn't care about me. And what I came to find out is she loved me deeply. I just wanted her to be proud of me. And when I said that, she broke down, I broke down, and she said, man, I sure would have have told me that 15 years ago because I'm so proud of you, I can't breathe, right? So it was giving her language that I needed. It was me um, doing the brave, courageous, probably the most manly thing I could do, which is say, here's what I need. Mm. That makes sense? Right. And I don't know that you need somebody that is walking alongside you, just patting you on the back and saying, telling you how great and smart and beautiful you are and how care about your business as much as you want her to acknowledge how hard you're working and the contribution you're making to your home. Is that fair? Fair. So I'd start there with a conversation and 
dude, the the pictures you had coming into marriage, everyone, it throws everyone off. So you're not in a bad spot. I just had to quit talking to my wife about uh, track times. I had to quit talking about higher ed issues and talk to her about other things. We had to develop other things to talk about. We had to create shared experiences so we would have things to talk about. And sometimes she would just like take one for the team and listen to me talk about work and vice versa. I didn't really understand what we we're talking about with K-12 education or whatever, but I listened. I got there. See what I'm saying? It's both in. It's a give right. and take. Does, is, is there a deeper tension here? I would say that um, it's hard to if she if she, she doesn't want to be involved and she doesn't, you know, like you said, that she didn't care about the business. She cares about me. It's hard to want to grow or I want to grow and continue working and to continue building. But if she doesn't want me to, it's hard on me to, like, give up my dreams or wants if it's not ours. Um, and I, I, it's almost as if I'm trying to force it to be ours. Yeah. And I think that's like devastating to me because it's all I've really ever wanted in my entire life. Was Um, what, was what, was what? I just building a a business and growing a business. And so has she told you, I don't want you growing a business. Growing it more than what we have. um, Normally that conversation is I miss my husband. Like, yeah, right. That's exactly what it is. And I think I've told this on the podcast, if I haven't, shame on me. It was this year that my wife held my face and said, John, we have enough. Stop. I need you. And I'm thinking, yeah, but I need more of this. I need to write another book and I got to get this thing out. And I got to get, I'm going on a tour. I've got to go hit the road. And she said, we have enough. And I had to drop my shoulders and ask myself, am I chasing ambition? Am I chasing ego? Or am I trying to give my family a better shot? Yeah, And that was me looking in the mirror. It had nothing to do with my wife. In fact, she was the one that just called it out. Said, from this point forward, any more hours you work, any more money you make isn't for us. It's to feed your own whatever you're trying to solve. And that was a hard thing for me to hear, but she was right. And by the way, it's not mutually exclusive. What I've done now is I haven't really throttled back that much, but I have had to speak my needs and be more firm at work and set up boundaries at work. And I've been much more clear at home Little things like putting my phone down, leaving my social media phone here at work, doing some things that just create some space at home so that when I'm there, I'm fully there and I'm not thinking about the business all day. As a young business owner, building a business can take your life over and it can take your soul over. And I've done the research and sat with folks who have done that for 50 years and they're 60 and and they think, oh, I gave up everything. I have no memories. I've got no kids or I've got two kids that don't like me. I've got a big bank account and I've got nothing. And so the work is not giving up one or the other. Don't back yourself into a corner that way. But it's saying, what does growing the business look like? And what is really swan diving um, into the relationship with my wife look like? Those aren't mutually exclusive. They're going to come at, they're going to have, they're going to be a teeter totter. It's going to be a balance. And she's dealing with the, with that picture from the other side too, right? She had a picture of a marriage where at five o'clock every day, Chris would come home and we would talk and laugh and, and her picture is going to be different too. That's where, where you start is y'all go on a retreat together. You've heard me say this a million times, go on a retreat together and say, Hey, we're three years in, <laughs> we have different pictures. Let's create a unified single picture and let's work towards it together. And that's going to be you giving up some stuff and her giving up some stuff and both of you getting some great things together and then we're off to the races. Do you see what a different view that is? Yeah. Can you do, yeah. do you think you can do that or you think your wife is saying, I want you to quit this business and go do something else? No, she doesn't want me to quit or anything, but it's just she wants the growth to stop. But what is the growth costing her? Um. It costs her the, I guess, mental stress on me when I come home. Okay. Um, You hear what that means. You are not telling, you're not hearing her words correctly. Her words are not telling you to stop working on the business, even though that's what she said. Her words are, I'm watching the man I love die in front of me and call it his dream. 
I'm watching the man I love, the man I stood before our friends and family and said, I'm all in forever. I'm watching him slowly drown in front of me and say, look how happy I am. That's what she's saying, Chris. So how do I get past my, my desires, my. It's not both and. Grow the business and decide that next year you're going to make 30,000 fewer dollars and you're going to hire an assistant that's going to take care of X and Y and Z. Decide next year you're going to make 65,000 less dollars and hire a senior manager that's going to run the ship for you. Put on an, all, an on-call staff so that at 5 o'clock only three people call you and that's if something is on fire or somebody's dead. Everything else can work till tomorrow. This is about um, a young business owner running a new business, trying to grow it and having no boundaries. And what you're going to find is two important, cool things. Number one, this thing will keep going without you hovering and breathing over it every second. And number two, when you have time to think and time to have great wild evenings with your wife and y'all go do fun stuff and like each other and have fun and you develop that relationship, you're going to be a thousand times better back on the ball field. Mm-hmm. And I know that it sounds like, yeah, okay, dude, whatever. I'm, I live it, dude. I'm doing it right now. I promise you. Mm-hmm. I think it starts with this. I think it starts with you taking your wife out and saying, over the last three years, I have been cheating on you with my business. And I have told you you're my priority, but my behavior is a language. And what I've demonstrated to you is the most important thing in my life is building this business. And I've got my priorities backwards. My most important priority in my life is my wife. It's our family. It's what we're doing together. And I am really passionate about this business. And I will give it all up if that's what it takes. But I don't think that's what it takes. Can you see some things in me? that you've seen shift and change over the last few years that I can work to manage around as this business grows. Things like time, things like a personal assistant, things like somebody checking email, things like a commitment to at six o'clock when you get home, the phones are all off and I'm going to outsource that. Whatever those things are on the weekends, I do not take work calls unless there is somebody dead or dying. Right? I'm going to create some really strong boundaries. Your wife's telling you that she loves you and she misses you and she doesn't want to watch you die right in front of her. She's not telling you to quit your business. She's just watching the business kill you. And please, my brother, don't, don't see this as the end of times. It's not your business or your wife. You can absolutely do both together. It's going to be coming up with boundaries and working together. Holler at me and let me know how that dinner goes. I'd love to hear about it.